Hi everybody, this is Dr. Rob Lindsay again, and uh, today we're talking about uh, diabetes treatment success secret number five. Know the side effects of metformin, also called glucophage. Okay? Of course, this is a drug that people who have diabetes often take. <clears throat> now, I know that the, the, uh, the slides here are a little smaller today, but just listen. You can read along later if you need to. Metformin has some serious side effects. Okay. Now, I'm not telling you, and I never would, to tell any of my patients to stop taking medications because that's, that's what medical doctors do. But I am telling you to be aware of what it's doing to your body. Here are some of the side effects of metformin, okay? Number one here, malaise. Okay, 10 to 25% of people who take glucophage just don't feel well. They experience a general malaise, fatigue, an occasional achiness that lasts for varying lengths of time. Now, malaise is a signal for the physician to closely monitor body systems affected by metformin, including the liver, the kidneys, and the GI tract. A blood count should be taken from time to time, as metformin can induce B vitamin insufficiencies, and that can lead to a form of anemia. How about GI disturbance? Now, about one-third of people uh, on metformin experience gastrointestinal disturbances, including nausea occasional vomiting, loose or more frequent bowel movements, or diarrhea. This problem occurs more often after meals rich in fats or sugars. Now the uh, symptoms are lessened over time, so if you can tolerate the GI upset for a few weeks, it may go away. Some women have found it helps to start with a very low dose and gradually increase it. How about this, vitamin B12 malabsorption. About 10 to 30% of the patients that take metformin show evidence of reduced vitamin B12 absorption. Now, a substance secreted in the stomach called intrinsic factor combines with B12 so that it can be transferred into the blood. Metformin interferes with the ability of your cells to absorb this intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex. And over the long term, Vitamin B12 insufficiency is a significant health risk because B12 is essential to the proper growth and function of every single cell in your body. It's required for the synthesis of DNA and for many critical biochemical functions. There's also a link between B12 in insufficiency and cardiovascular disease. At least one study raises the concern that even if metformin is withdrawn, the vitamin B12 malabsorption may continue in some people. The apparent cause is continued problems with the availability of intrinsic factor, which is required for B12 absorption. Here's another one, elevated homocysteine levels. People who take metformin tend to have higher homocysteine levels. Women who have uh, <clears throat> polycystic ovarian syndrome, they also tend to have elevated homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is an amino acid in the blood. A normal amount is okay, but an elevated level means that your metabolic processes are not working properly. Elevated homocysteine is associated with coronary artery disease, with heart attacks, with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, cognitive impairment, and cervical cancer. Vitamin B12 along with vitamin B6 and folic acid, which is another B vitamin, is responsible for metabolizing homocysteine into less potentially harmful substances. So when you take metformin, it can reduce the absorption of vitamin B12. You lose one of the nutrients needed to reduce homocysteine levels and thus reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. How about elevated homocysteine and pregnancy complications. Preeclampsia is a complication of pregnancy and it's characterized by increasing blood pressure and edema or swelling. Now if left untreated, preeclampsia can lead to eclampsia, which is a serious condition that puts your, you and your baby at risk. In a study conducted at the Center for Perinatal Studies at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, a second trimester elevation of homocysteine was associated with a 3.2-fold increased risk of preeclampsia. The Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology uh, in the Netherlands reviewed a series of studies 
on the link between elevated homocysteine and early pregnancy loss. They concluded that high homocysteine levels are a risk factor for recurrent early pregnancy loss. These are, this is sad. These are people who, they've gotten pregnant and now they're having miscarriage. Ovarian uh, follicular fluid contains detectable amounts of homocysteine along with B12, B6, and folic acid. The follicular fluid provides nourishment to the egg by facilitating transport of nutrients from blood plasma. While well, high levels of homocysteine, as well as insufficient B vitamins, may adversely influence the process of fertilization and early fetal development. So, listen to this. We are suggesting that elevated homocysteine, not metformin itself, could contribute to pregnancy complications in some women. However, metformin does contribute to increased homocysteine levels. So you can extrapolate what you think about that. Pregnancy warning. Many women use metformin in their pursuit of a successful pregnancy. However, metformin is a category B drug, meaning its safety for use while pregnant has not been established. It is found in breast milk, so it's not advisable to breastfeed while taking metformin or glucophage. Here's another complication, anemia. By preventing optimal absorption of vitamin B12 and folic acid, metformin can induce or contribute to megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia occurs when your bone marrow doesn't have enough B vitamins to manufacture red blood cells. Your bone marrow then releases immature and dysfunctional red blood cells into the circulation. And although anemia is not uh, common among people taking metformin, it remains a risk for those whose B12 and folic acid levels were already low when metformin therapy was begin. Here's another potential thing with metformin, liver or kidney problems. Now if you have liver or kidney problems of any kind, metformin could cause a problem because it alters liver function and it's excreted through the kidneys. A healthy liver and kidneys will improve your outcome with metformin. Liver and kidney function should be assessed before starting metformin and rechecked at least once a year while taking it. A blood chemistry screen and a complete blood count will tell your physician how well your system is doing with this drug. How about other medications? You may be at risk for health problems or symptoms if you take metformin in addition to other medications. The more drugs you take, the higher the dose, the greater the probability there will be some kind of interaction between the drugs or some unexpected effect from the combination of drugs. The effect of combined drugs also depends on the state of your health, your genetic uniqueness, and your diet and lifestyle. Always consult with your doctor if you add or change any medication or if you develop any symptoms. Here's another biggie, hair loss. Metformin may contribute to male pattern hair loss at the temples and the top of the head. Although there's nothing in the medical uh, literature to support this linkage, some women have reported that hair loss was made worse by metformin. How about lactic acidosis? About three of every 100,000 people who take metformin will develop a medical emergency called lactic acidosis. Lactic acid is a, a metabolic byproduct that can become toxic if it builds up faster than it is neutralized. Lactic acidosis is most likely to occur in people with diabetes, kidney or liver disease, multiple medications, dehydration, or severe chronic stress. Lactic acidosis can build up gradually, and symptoms to watch for include a need to breathe deeply and more rapidly, a slow, irregular pulse, a feeling of weakness, muscle pain, sleepiness, and a sense of feeling very sick. Treatment requires intravenous administration of sodium bicarbonate. You need to contact your doctor or go immediately to a hospital emergency room if you have these symptoms and you're taking metformin. It can also affect bile. Bile is produced by the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and secreted into the intestines in order to absorb fats into the bloodstream. One possible reason for the GI problems is that metformin reduces normal reabsorption of bile from the intestines back into the bloodstream, which causes elevated bile salts 
in the colon. And most studies suggest that colonic bile salts cause free radical damage to DNA and may contribute to colon cancer. Again, we're just going through one success secret after another, trying to help you have more information about how to get well and stay well. And if you would love to come into our office, we'd love to see you. Call at 952-949-0676 and we'll get you taken care of. I look forward to seeing you on the next success secret.